This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today we're going to look at a nice fractional part equation that's a little bit related to Fermat's last theorem. So let's see what we have going on here. Our goal is to answer the question, are there non-trivial solutions to this equation? The fractional part of x cubed plus the fractional part of y cubed equals the fractional part of z cubed where by non-trivial solutions, I mean that x, y, and z are not allowed to be integers, but they are allowed to be rational numbers. So notice if they're integers, this is super boring because the fractional part of an integer is zero, and you would simply get, well, zero equals zero. Or if one of them is zero, well, anyway, it would boil down to something not very interesting. Now, let's officially recall what the fractional part is. So it's the difference between the number and its floor. So for instance, the fractional part of 28.12 is 0.12. The fractional part of 10 over three is one over three because that's the same thing as three plus a third. Before we continue, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you ready to reimagine your online presence? Look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is a service that takes the hassle out of creating a website. There's no need to be a graphic designer to have a professionally designed website. Squarespace gives you access to templates that are not only visually stunning, but also fully customizable to reflect you and your brand. The new Fluid Engine gives you complete control over the structure of your website. Squarespace's intuitive drag and drop builder allows you to create and edit your website effortlessly. No technical skills required. Every website you create with Squarespace is fully optimized for mobile, so your audience can enjoy your content on any device, anywhere, anytime. Use Squarespace's analytics to measure your website's performance and make informed decisions for growth. I use Squarespace for my website and find it easy to use with plenty of integrations. They even have a plugin for LaTeX that allows me to include equations on my website very easily. Whether you need a place to sell your merch or show your art, Squarespace has the tools that you need to keep your website modern and easy to use. Give Squarespace a try by going to squarespace.com slash Michael Penn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code Michael Penn. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so let's get going. So our strategy will be to write X, Y, and Z in the following format. So let's write x as l plus a over k, where l is an integer, and then a is some number that is between one and k minus one. So in other words, it's like an appropriate numerator for when the denominator is k. And then we're gonna do the same thing for y and z. So we'll say y is equal to m plus b over k, and then here we have m is an integer, and then b is, well, it's gonna be between one and k minus one, just as a was. And then similarly, we're gonna write z as n plus c over k. So n is an integer, and then let's see, we have c in the same range. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. Let's just look at x cubed to see the format, and then we'll see what our equation turns into. So x cubed, that'll be L plus A over K all cubed. But cubing that out with the binomial formula, we'll get L cubed plus three L squared A over K plus three L A squared over K squared, and then plus A squared A cubed over k cubed. So again, that's just by cubing it out with the binomial formula, or you could do it out long if you wanted to. And then I'll just say that y cubed and z cubed are similar. Now putting this all into our equation, we have the following. So this will be within the fractional part. We will have 3l squared a over k plus 3l a squared over k squared plus a cubed over k cubed. So that's for our fractional part of x cubed. You might say, well, where did this L cubed term go? Well, but we know that that is a non-negative integer. I snuck in the fact that that needs to be a non-negative integer, 
but that means that it does not contribute anything to the fractional part. Just think about if you added four to this, you would get the same fractional part. Or if you added a thousand to that number, again, you would get the same fractional part. So maybe this is bigger than one, and so we could do some simplification there, but we don't know. But the one thing we do know is that L cubed, and similarly M cubed, cubed and N cubed are all positive integers, so we cannot write them. We don't need to write them, I should say, in the fractional part operator. Okay, so let's write the Y cubed term. So again, that's in the fractional part, and then we'll have 3m squared b over k plus 3m b squared over k squared and then plus b cubed over k cubed. And now before this gets out of hand, you might say, well, how did I write these with the same denominator? Well, I just gave them a common denominator before I got started. Okay, so now let's write the z cubed term over here. So that'll be something like this. We'll have three n squared c over k plus 3n c squared over k squared plus c cubed over k cubed. Okay, so like I said, this is our equation using our representations of x, y, and z. Now we're going to use a pretty powerful problem solving technique, at least maybe not to get all the solutions, but to get some solutions. And that technique is to use wishful thinking. In other words, we look at a really complicated equation or expression or something, and you think, well, can I just look at a simplified version of this and see if I get a solution? And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So let's hope that we can take, well, what would simplify this? Well, I think it's pretty clear that L equals zero would simplify this quite a bit. So in other words, the integer part of x is zero, and then m equals zero would simplify this second term. In other words, the integer part of y is also equal to zero. You might say, well, what about the integer part of z being equal to zero? But that means that we would have a rational solution because when we cube this number right here, which is between zero and one, take the fractional part. Well, the fractional part doesn't do anything. And we know that there are no rational solutions to an equation like this without the fractional part operator by Fermat's last theorem. So I won't go into that too much. Okay, so that means, well, we cannot take n to be equal to zero, but let's see what sort of simplification at least taking L and M equal to zero gives us. So that's gonna give us a cubed plus b cubed over k cubed, because we can take the fractional part there, we know what's going on, equals the fractional part of three n squared c over k plus three n c squared over k squared plus c cubed over k cubed. Okay, nice. So that definitely simplified this left-hand side, but it did not simplify this right-hand side very much. We know that we can't take n equal to zero, again by Fermat's last theorem, but perhaps we could hope for a solution that n could be equal to one. So let's say, I'm just gonna say we're going to hope again that n equals one will deposit us a solution. So let's see, if we plug n equals one into this, well, what does that turn into? Well, we'll have a cubed plus b cubed over k cubed equals the fractional part of three c over k plus three c squared over k squared plus c cubed over k cubed. So still not a lot simpler. Now we're gonna make another hope. And you might say, well, well, what's the point of this? And in fact, if we never got a solution in the end, making these like hopeful guesses would have had no point, but you will see that we will get a solution in the end. So let's maybe hope that this is between zero and one. And if that's between zero and one, then the fractional part is just, well, what we have. So in other words, we have the following equation. So I'm gonna maybe put a common denominator here and I'm gonna have 
3CK squared plus 3C squared K plus C cubed all over K cubed. So again, we applied this method of wishful thinking one, two, three times to end up at this solution. To end up at this equation, A cubed plus B cubed equals this numerator over here. Notice I wrote them both with the denominator of K cubed so we could do that. But now that's finally simple enough that this may work out. Okay, so let's see where this takes us. So after applying the technique of wishful thinking three times, we got down to this point where x was a over k, y was b over k, and z was one plus c over k, where a, b, and c were between one and k minus one. That means that x and y are between zero and one, and z is between one and two. And that led us to the following equation. So the neat thing that we can do here is add and subtract k cubed to this and we'll get some nice simplification. So we'll have a k cubed minus k cubed. So let's see where that leaves us. So now we have a cubed plus b cubed equals, I'm gonna group this together, k cubed plus three, I'm gonna write this as k squared times c plus three k times c squared plus c cubed minus k cubed. But now this might look familiar as a binomial that's been expanded. And in fact, this is equal to k plus c or maybe c plus k quantity cubed. And then I'll bring down the k cubed. So that means we've got this equation a cubed plus b cubed equals c plus k cubed minus k cubed. And now the idea is we just kind of search for small solutions to this equation. And so those solutions have to satisfy this rule up here. So everything has to be a positive integer. And then furthermore, a, b, and c have to be between one and k minus one. So maybe unfortunately or fortunately, there's no real systematic way to do this. I actually put it into Mathematica and had it find one for me but I think you can probably guess and check. And here's one solution, the solution that we're gonna work with. So we'll have A equals one, B equals six, we'll have C equals one and K equals eight. And you can easily check that that satisfies this equation. So in other words, we have one cubed plus six cubed is 217 but that's the same thing as nine cubed minus eight cubed, which is this right-hand side. Okay, so, well, what does that really mean? So that means that X naught, which is equal to one over eight, Y naught, which is equal to six over eight, in other words, three over four, and z naught, which is equal to one plus one over eight, in other words, nine over eight, is a solution. And you can check that by plugging that over here. We'll see that that is in fact a solution. But now what we'd like to do is take this maybe simplest solution and see if we can boost it to an infinite family of solutions. And the idea is we add some sort of integer to each of these, and that integer should satisfy this rule that when we cube everything out, the only thing left that's a non-integer is the cube of 1 8 in this case, 3 quarters in this case, and 9 8 in the other case. Okay, so let's see what works here. So let's take x equal to, 64 in plus one over eight. But if we multiply this out, we'll see exactly what we want to happen will happen. So X cubed will be equal to 262,144 in cubed. That's most definitely a positive integer. Plus 1,536 in squared plus three n plus one over 512. But like I said, all of that first bit is an integer. So when we, pet, when we take the fractional part, exactly what we want to happen will happen. So the fractional part of x cubed is equal to one over 512. And now let's see what we can do with y. 
So with y, we don't have to go up to 64 in order to get everything to simplify. All we have to do is go up to 16. So 16 in plus 3 quarters. And if we do that, what do we get for y cubed? So it'll be 4,096 in cubed plus 576 in squared plus 27 in plus 27 over 64. But again, all of that first bit is a whole number so that when we take the fractional part again, we get exactly what we want. And by exactly what I want is, you know, the same thing as cubing this thing, which we called y naught. Okay, so let's see. Fractional part of y cubed is equal to 27 over 64, but I'm gonna go ahead and give that a common denominator with 512, and it's gonna be 216 over 512. And now let's see z. So we'll set z equal to 64n plus 9 over 8. So we need the 64 again for a similar reason to we needed for x up here. Okay, so let's see what happens to z cubed. So z cubed will be equal to, well, we have the same big coefficient in front of n cubed. And then we'll have 13,824 in squared, and then 243 in, and then, well, we're gonna have nine over eight cubed, but I'm gonna write that as one plus 217 over 512. And that really takes out the guesswork of what we need to do when we do the fractional part. Okay, so now notice everything except for the last term is an integer, so when we take the fractional part, we have it. So we have z cubed is equal to 217 over 512. But now notice, if we just add down that, we see fractional part of x cubed plus fractional part of y cubed equals fractional part of z cubed. And since all along the way, we parametrize these with n, where n was a positive integer, we see that we clearly have infinitely many solutions to this equation. And that was just based off of this one, what I'll call base solution here. And all I did was a search in Mathematica for solutions to this equation satisfying this rule right here, where I think k had to be between zero and 10. And one other non-equivalent solution for values of k between one and 10. But I think you would get a lot more if you let k get larger. So that being said, this is only one family of infinitely many solutions. And anytime you have a base solution like this, you can get other families of infinitely many solutions. So let's look over here. Are there non-trivial solutions to this equation? Well, yes, there are. There are, in fact, infinitely many. And that's a good place to stop.